What's going on guys? This is episode number 132 and today I want to shift a little bit on things around and I want to talk about how do you see yourself and this is going to be inspired by the Winner's Image program so by Bob Pratcher by the way so before guys I always want to say thank you guys for all the support for all the listeners for everybody that always uh, listen to the podcast you know beginning some of my thing but we also want to uh, talk about personal development fitness we're gonna combine and we're gonna do everything holistically right and this is what um this podcast this this segment is all about you know changing mind body soul all those changes combined into one you know they all intertwine to some way or somehow and i love talking about different things and different things that i learned during the time of of my journey and that i want to share with you guys so so let's um let's get let's get at it right let's talk about about self-image how do you see yourself all right let's go great for thank you guys for always subscribing to the channel don't forget if you haven't subscribed yet you'll go ahead and do that just watching this video on youtube then don't forget to hit on that subscribe button right down below if you are listening to the podcast and um, well go ahead and give us a, a, a five star rating uh, make put some comments into the comment section of the podcast and that allows this podcast to grow and reach to a wider audience all right so today i want to talk about self-image how do you see yourself and i actually got inspired by the winner image um, program by bob Proctor, which a lot of you guys know he's my mentor and I, um, when it's come down to personal development, definitely a lot of his material has changed my life. And I mean, Bob has been inspired by several others that had done it prior to him. But, um, you know, like Dale Carnegie and, and so on and so forth. But I wanted to, to talk about this particular topic because uh, a lot of us face with, with image problems, you know. We we probably been conditioning from like it's from we little, um, and we 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 came out with a with a specific uh, image about us. You know, you're not this, or you're not good enough. You're not tall enough. You're not good. You're not strong, or you're not smart enough, or you're not cute enough. You're not handsome. You're not beautiful. Whatever is that we have been raised. And it's been programmed to our brains for so long that when it comes down to becoming an adult or even a teenager or a younger adult or younger kid, an older kid, no matter the age, we have all these thoughts in our brains and in our head. And then that reflects on the way we, we act, and the way we communicate with others, in the way we... Um, in the way we do things actually so basically it's a reflect or it's an image of what we've been programmed for so many years and i want to be able to stop that right now i want to be able to provide you guys with enough content that you start thinking about this and you start making changes like right now in your life so i'm going to be quoting a few things from the book or from the program as well and that i think there are key points you know, to make this transition for all of you guys, just like I help you guys with your um, plant-based diet, veganism, and all that. I also want to be able to provide you with some knowledge on this aspect because all of you guys are capable of doing anything you put your mind into. Anything. Think about how many times you have thought about something you want really, 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 really bad, and then suddenly it happens. Now, the key is you don't know when it will happen, but it happened. So I can tell you so many stories about situations that I really want back from um, moving to moving from a different country. Uh, you know, there was a time in my life that I was like, I was like, I really want to move, you know, from my current situation, move somewhere else. And it, it happened. It didn't happen. It didn't happen right away. It didn't happen for one year, two years, three years down, down the road. But eventually it happened, and I felt so so glorified. I felt so satisfied when I was able to accomplish that, and then by my by myself. So, a lot of people might might think that you know this might be luck. Others, you know, will say that this is just God God's will. Others might say it's a universe. It don't matter how you wanna uh, frame it or think through it, uh, depending on your 
uh, or your status or your belief at this moment. But the point is that if you really put your mind into it, and it sounds like a cliche, you will be able to accomplish that. And I know for for a lot of you guys, it's depending on the way you see yourself that this makes a big difference. The reason why you fail or win is all due to the way you see yourself. So I'll open with that quote. And this is true. Because if you see yourself as a winner, you're going to win, right? But if you see yourself like a loser, then you're going to lose. So the our subconscious doesn't really know how to filter good or bad. That's not something that you have to do, right? So your conscious mind will allow, uh, we have to come up with, you know, the good or bad things. And then our subconscious mind will, will start reprogram or doing those things. And that will trigger into uh, the way we act. So the, the filtering of, of good or bad has to be done by, by you. And at that point, if you start consuming positive things, you start doing the right things, the right things are going to happen to you. Regardless if down the road, you know, other things happen. You, you either you DBA or you um, you go through a, a, a bump in the road like we call it. But all those different things are steps toward your goal. Trust me. I remember like for uh, when I wanted to um, play basketball for the team in school. Um, I think at that age when I find like a passion for sport, especially that particular sport, I probably at that point in my life didn't have all the skills needed to make the team. So I went to try out and I, f- and I failed. I got, I didn't get picked for the team. So I was disappointed. I was like, man, you know, I wanted to really make the team and whatnot. So I took the summer and I started practicing, playing, practicing, getting better, getting better, getting better. And the next year, I went back to try up, and I made the team. So it didn't happen that time, but it eventually happened, and I made the team. And then my first year in the team, our team won all games, so we literally went undefeated. So it was a successful year for, for us. We literally went every single game and was starting to understand myself, my niche, and how I can contribute to my team, how can I be a good teammate, learning uh, roles, r- learning different um, positions and skill set, and all these different things we were learning in my first year. Then my second year on the team, uh, at this point, I was a junior, right? And our team did not do very well. <laughs> you know what I mean? So we, I think we got, we got, we got third in the overall um, league, but um, but I was, I got, I was playing with, you know, with the seniors, right? So I had to learn a lot from those guys how to conduct, how to play the game, and so forth. But at the same time, you know, it was some of those, some of those teaching lessons that um, they were important for me to to learn. Because guess what? The next following year, my senior year, now was my turn to teach the younger guys how to play the game, how to be, how to be a good teammate, and so on and so forth. So it was your time for me to give back. So you have different phases of, of that evolution. But the point here that I want to share with you guys is that when you when you really want something and you really put your mind and you put the work, that's also another thing, you're definitely going to accomplish those goals. You're going to get there. You just don't know when it's going to happen. But if you really, if you really put the mind into it and focus to it, then you you'll get it. You'll get there. You definitely will get there. And I did. And that's that's just one example. But I can tell you guys many stories. Same thing with um, when I decided to go vegan, and I I put, I put my mind into it. And even though there was not a lot of information back then, I still stuck with it and learned and and and, and did some research and study and got better. Got better at cooking got better at explaining the, the lifestyle, uh, understood more of the, the science behind it. You see what I mean? So it was a process. And once uh, I, I was able to to accomplish that, then it's like, oh, okay, veganism is easy to me, right? Now it's like that I don't know anything else. So it, come, it came out to be, you know, uh, a pretty easy, straightforward lifestyle instead of being a complicated thing like most people make it sounds to be. Let me quote something else. Your self-image was very likely unconsciously formed from past experiences. 
your success and failures, your humiliations and triumphs. This image or opinion you have of yourself will determine how you interpret other people's reactions to you and significantly affect your success. This is true. Like I said, everything that we have done in the past, you know, will affect you in the future to some way, somehow. It could be in a positive way, it could be in a negative way. So what we, but, you know, what we need to do is that if there's something um, blocking you for reaching to your potential, you can stop that right now and make those changes. You can definitely um, become a better person by changing those things. You got to change your paradigm, basically. Nah, that's how it goes. The reason why we think about ourselves right now is due to the past programs and culture. That's the way it is. A lot of the things that we have we're facing right now is due to our past. But you know, I don't think it's is is it right or appropriate thing to start blaming our past for you know for the way we think, the way the process or the way things are being done right now. Uh that's part of our past. What we can do right now is change. Make that change. Be the change. You contribute to becoming a better you, a better person, a more efficient person, uh, a person with better thought process, with, uh, with a positive mindset, with values, and being able to see life differently and help each other, help you help others to kind of accomplish those goal, whatever those goals are. You can change your current thought process by changing the way you think about yourself. That's what the winner image taught me. Seriously, it does. It does make a change. It did make a change. And it will continue making a change. Why? Because you see life differently, right? You don't see that things are impossible anymore. When we talk about being changing your lifestyle or let's let's talk about fitness for example a lot of people are like oh man you know it's, it's, it's difficult or i don't want to work out or i don't want to do this or i don't want to do that it's about starting starting to have it i'll use my pop I mean, some room i'll use my dad he wanted to he wants to get in shape so he asked me for help hey, you know help can you help me out can you set me up with a with a meal plan and a workout routine? Actually, he asked me for a workout routine, even though I offer a meal plan. But he asked me for a workout routine. So you know, we sat down and we discussed about his goals. And I was like, yeah, sure, I can definitely help you put up a plan together. And at the beginning, for him, it was difficult. Oh, it was tough, you know finish on the reps, you know, because your body's not used to that kind of workout. Your body's not used to that kind of movement. You know, you, you live a sedentary life. You're not used to to moving around, doing workouts, and, you know, doing doing lunges, doing push-ups, and things like, diff- things like that. You're not used to that. So when, when you set him up with a plan, he was like, wow, you know, everything hurts. You know, this is hard. This is painful. Treat me. Be nice with me and all these different things. You know, it's because it's mine. He's already thinking that everything is difficult. And he has to, you know, I have to be more easy, easy, easy on him for the workout. Even though I wasn't really being any difficult or any hard. He was just, you know, not used to doing those things. But... As a trainer that I am, I was like, no, you gotta, you gotta go work out. You gotta do your plan. You gotta stick to your routine, and you're gonna start seeing how it's gonna become easier and easier and easier, and then you're gonna demand more. And I actually give him a lot of credit because he was the one that decided to continue working out because he could have quit, right? But he stayed committed, and he was, he was going good. He did good. And he great actually, and during that process, he he was able to to continue with the workout. Now he's in a point that's like, man, I want more. I want I want another workout. Maybe something more challenging, you know. And then he started saying, you know what? I feel good when I go to work. I have a lot of energy. I thought I was gonna be low energy. Like working out made me feel good. Made me feel proud about myself. You know, it, it does. It just changed you completely. It's like my body feels good. You know, I had sleeping better, and we're not even talking about 
the changes when he starts changing his diet. We're just talking about working out. Can you imagine how to another level will it take his workout? He will start talking about starting eating a plant-based, starting eating a plant-based, a whole food plant-based diet, or eating um, eating vegan. That will take him to a all new level. But the point is that he stay committed and he's able to accomplish a lot of his goal and he's making a big change in his life. And that's what we all talk about, you know. We all talk about how your mind has different different triggers that you can, if you start thinking that, no, I can do this, I can do this, and I'm going to do this, and as some, you start making steps towards that goal, you're going to accomplish that goal before you even think that is going to happen, but it's just going to happen. I would like to share this learning process by by Leland Bob Van der Waal, right? He said, writing causes thinking. Thinking create an image. Image controls feelings. Feelings cause actions. Actions create results. I just did samples of business. You start a concept. Then it goes into a business plan. And then from a business plan, it goes to a natural business, right? So you write that thought process. I can't even think that, you know, everything starts from your brain. You know, you start thinking about the concept, the idea, and then you write that idea down. And then once you're writing that idea down, that concept down, it could be musing. You know, how you think a lot of a lot of musicians, some of them don't say, they say they don't write everything, right? Or they have it in their brain, right? Uh, however, some of them have so much music that... Um, that when they got to perform, they forget the lyrics because they never wrote it down. So anyway, so you start writing. You can write, and then that turns into something. And in the case, it could be music. It could be a business plan. It could be a letter. It could be a recipe. It don't matter what it is. But a lot of those things, this is how it works. Masterminding, the basis of building a witness image. Same as laying strong foundation yeah. upon the turn To turn your fantasy into a theory, it requires a shift in your attitude. So I'm gonna give you guys a couple basic of building your winning image. Like how can you build an image that is gonna put you into success, into success state, right? So that's what we call a winner's image. So how can you build that up? How can you create a basic uh, framework, right? Let me use the word framework so you can have the right thought process, the right tools, the right ideas the right concept so you can build so you can be successful in life and then in the book they break it down in three basic things a fantasy a theory and facts so what is are these things so a fantasy begin is like basically when you when you have a, when you have in your mind this idea how this concept in mind it could be a business idea it could be a song it could be a project it could be a body it could be a lifestyle change it could be a house whatever that is so you start with a fantasy call it a fantasy or like we start with an idea the reason why we call it a fantasy or the books call it a fantasy is because it has to be something big oh it necessarily it could be something small but for you it's big right because some people might say well for me to be able to go to school to this particular school is something big right but for someone it might be something small so that's all relative but this fantasy or this concept in your mind it has to be something that really triggers you like really passionate so currently right now i have a big fantasy a big a big idea for me it's a big idea where i'm thinking about um, creating this center creating this um creating this this big old business this entertainment center you know big and food and all kind of games and all the different things so it's an awesome place to enjoy with family right i have this concept that you know family can come kids can come adults can come everybody can come have a good time and you can sell in a safe place safe space uh you know, eating good vegan food, even if it's fast food, vegan food, but it's still clean and nice and good food. Yet at the same time, enjoying your time, entertaining yourself, having a good time with your families and friends, right? So I have this big old idea, so this big old concept. So it's a, it's a, right now, it's a, like a fantasy, right? It's a fantasy world. I have this concept. I wrote it down already. So I have a plan and how I want everything to work, how many people don't want it to come through how many people don't want it to enjoy the place it, all these different ideas all the different concepts so this big old fantasy so that fantasy was going to turn into theory the theory is going to turn into okay this is how we're going to do this plan this is the things that we're going to do 
this is how it's going to be uh, taken care of, how it's going to monetize the business, how the business is going to work, how the flow, the equipment, everything. So that's how you go from a fantasy to a theory because now it's something tangible in the sense of like I have a piece of paper or they have all the description of it. So it's like a manual that you can go ahead and read and have a detail. And in some cases that, that theory also becomes into something tangible, more tangible, like the actual product or the actual business or the actual song or whatever it is that we're talking about, right? And then in the end, this is the facts, which will actually be that theory or that paper or turn into a reality, right? So the theory turns into the facts. So the facts is now we're talking about the product itself combined with the theory so now we got the product we got the, the letter the song the the whatever is that element that we're talking about so that's how you have those three basic elements that you're going to use to create your image you always want to start with a fantasy or a thought you know an idea concept something that triggers you something you have in your mind there's a lot of passion into it then you have a theory it's like okay how am i going to build this how am i going to do this you know you start writing that down and then the facts is actually the tangible product the tangible item so it's what actually comes out of that theory out of that out of that fantasy that's all the different levels of how that's going to happen so that's something that you guys can use right away to um definitely create those images in your mind so you don't doubt that it is possible you have to definitely believe so there are five main points or programs for materializing your successful image or your winner's image you all make sure that you relax you change your watch listen and you communicate so let me break all these things down right so this is important that you when you're building your successful image or you're building your self image, right? That you take all these five elements into consideration. Okay, when we talk about relax, is that a lot of people always stress, you know, running around and, and doing this and that, but with the more calm you are, the better you flow. Listen, right? Think about like how professionals when they're playing sport, you don't see them all stressed out. Oh my God. No, you see them calm, collect, you see? If you watch baseball, for example, the pitcher, he has to be super calm, super relaxed. But he cannot be all stressed out because then he's still gonna he's not gonna be able to hit the zone. So if we you if we talk about a professor in school, he or she has to be very calm when he's giving his course, his class. Because you don't want your students to freak out. You don't want your students to be panicking. You don't want your students to not understand what's going on. You don't want to be able to communicate properly. So relax plays a big role. Now, you have to find a way that works for you in relaxing. In my opinion, one thing that helps a lot is meditating. You meditate before, every morning. Some people make it twice a day. You have five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, whatever the time is. You meditate. You start your day with a good, clean energy, positive, good feedback. And then you start your day. And during your day, you stay calm. You can You can stay calm by... Relaxing, meditating, breathing in and out, doing those those strokes several times a day. <sighs> yeah, that definitely would help you to kind of be in a very calm, cool and collect uh, mindset. So relaxing is very, very, very important. You hardly see someone that is on the top tier of, of our, our success that is not calm or collect or it's not relaxed because it plays, those plays a big role. It's important that you maintain that calmness all the time, lucidly, because it allows you to flow and think better. When I'm relaxed, I I get the better ideas. I'm more productive. I um it, it does change completely. My body my body reacts when I'm not when I'm not calm and collect, when I'm not relaxed. But when I am, I flow so smooth. So to me, I know that that works. I know that being relaxed is key and it works for me. Change, okay. So when we talk about change, we're talking about you have to make sure that not only you are thinking about positive things in your life, but also you have to start making changes in your life. So let's talk about let's talk about diet, for example. Since since I'm a vegan diehard, right? I'm a diehard vegan. 
So let's talk about people want to make changes in their life, but they're not willing to put the work. So when you start eating better, it will definitely improve your health. So that's a change you did. You changed the way a bad habit, a old paradigm. You change the way you used to eat for a more compassionate way to eat now. And that change comes with a lot of reward, right? Better health, better environment, better planet, you know, um, very more compassion, you know, and, and so on and so forth. So, so that change changed you completely too. So when we're talking about change, you're not just, oh yeah, I'm thinking about doing this, and it stays there. But it's also there's a change involved with the thinking. So you have to go from one to the other. You have to be able to make that change. And sometimes change is involved in changing the way you eat, changing the way you dress, and the way you think, changing the way you communicate. Changes. So we constantly are doing changes. It's like how many times as an IT guy you have an application or a software, right? And then you have the core software, but how many changes do you think we do to the, uh, the program during the lifespan of that application? Think about your phone. How many updates do you get or an application? How many updates do the application get, right? So those are different changes. Uh, they're improving performance and adding things, adding this. How many times your your apps in your phone changes? They change the layout, change the color, change the font, change add this feature and this, this, because that. The world, that's the way it is. We're constantly changing. And you cannot stay behind. You have to also stay in the same loop and start changing. Watch. Okay, the next one is watch. When we're talking about watch, is to observe, to see how things are evolving, right? You see your surrounding, but not only you're seeing your surrounding, but also seeing yourself, right? How you see yourself improving and making the changes, right? You have to observe how the people's behaviors are. So you can so you can see how the successful people uh, are doing it, and then you want to try to to replicate, imitate, or get inspired by their success. That way, you can have the same success as well, or even better, right? But at the same time, being a servant of others allows you. To do that, but you have to be inspired. But it has to come with a clean heart, right? It cannot be in a negative way. An example is like I seen, like I know Robert Sheik, right? A lot of you know knows that I know Robert Sheik. Man, I've been serving Robert Sheik for four years now, and how he's been growing as a great uh, writer, and how he manages social media, how he deals with with public and and people, and all the different things he's done, his workout routines, and all that. And I, I'm a fan. I'm a, I'm a friend at the same time, he, and at the end of the day, I observe his success, and I'm like super proud, and at the same time, it's like, this, that's the kind of person that you want to model when it comes to um, doing the right things and, and doing things um, successfully, and so he's a good person to model, so, and the same way with Badass Vegan, I know Badass Vegan for quite a while now. And you want to see people like that that are doing great things that you want to replicate, and you want to be able to to um, to get some to get inspired by them, and, and be able to do a lot of the things, incorporate a lot of the things to your personal life. So when we talk about the next one is listen. As, just like you watch, you also have to pay attention. You have to listen. You have to listen to what's going on. You have to see what others have to say, and then you have to make your own opinion. You have to make your own decisions at the end, but you have to see what others. You have to see what others are doing, and you have to also listen to what's going on. That way, you stay relevant. That way, you stay. Um, you can create your own opinions and your own paradigm. But for that to happen, you have to listen. At the same time, you have to listen to content that is valuable content. I only listen to information that is going to benefit me in my personal journey in my business journey or my fitness journey i don't listen to stuff that is not going to feed me with anything positive so when it's something that is negative it's not giving me enough um positive content positive value i discard it because i don't want to listen to that i want to listen to materials to stuff that actually feed me with energy positive good vibration and all the different things right and then at the end is communicate you want to be able to communicate those things either by social media or either you want to communicate 
verbally or writing. I mean, however you want to. But this is some of the things that you have to take into account when we're talking about prepping yourself for materializing or becoming or creating that image that you need to have, that winner's image. These five things will definitely will change you completely if you apply them because we all rely on them. We all rely on need to be able to be relaxed, to be able to handle situations easily, be able to change, be able to watch, listen, and communicate. So I want to end this, right? I just wanted to go on and share with you guys a little bit of what I've been learning lately when it comes down to the Witness Image program, or I call it Sales. Um, basically, is how can you become self-aware? How can you become successful um, by changing your image, who you think about yourself? Because a lot of you guys don't think that you're capable of doing things. I think I have self-doubt. Well, I don't know if I can do that. Well, yeah, guess what? Yes, you can. You literally can. You are, you are able to do all of those things and more. But you have to believe that you can do it. Do you believe that you can do it? I do believe in you, so you better believe in yourself. Because I believe in myself that I can do anything. So why not you believe in yourself, right? So I'm going to leave with this um, quote by Angel Hunt. It said, decide what you want. Decide what you are prepared to give up to get it. Set your mind on it and get on with the work. As simple as it sounds. So I have several goals, guys, and I'm, I'm excited every single day to, to see what, what next, what next. And I have so many, like so many ideas and things that I want to do. Like I want to do everything, right? But at the same time, I'm trying to say focus. Focus on accomplishing one goal before I jump into the next goal. But the point is I'm focused, I'm committed, I'm passionate, I'm inspired, and I will continue doing these videos for you guys and this lesson for you guys. If you guys love this kind of content, let me know. I will definitely will create more uh, content like this for y'all. And I'll see you guys in the next time. Love you guys. Take care.